right, okay, let's talk about Ron Johnson. Do we have time? Should we do your thing? No, let's do Ron okay, Johnson. All right, we have time. Cool. So Ron Johnson was very, very upset at the way that he was treated at a Juneteenth celebration in Milwaukee over the weekend. Uh, looks like he's a bit of a beta. Beta! Beta mayor! You are beta mayor. So Ron Johnson is one of the right wing lawmakers who is actually against a Juneteenth holiday. He voted against a Juneteenth holiday, right? And so luckily that did pass through Congress even in the Senate, which usually that's where bills usually go to die because of the legislative filibuster, but it passed, so great news. But Johnson again was one of the lawmakers who was against it. So when he shows up to a Juneteenth event in Milwaukee, here's how he was greeted. So uh, Ashwarya, get that bumper ready again, because I want you to play it after I read his quote. Ron Johnson did not like the way he was treated. The senator uh, was disturbed by this. He said, quote, you come down here and try to interact with people and be nice to people. But this isn't very nice, is it? Go, play it. Beta, <laughs> beta mayor, you are beta mayor. I mean, yeah, you tried to block that bill. You tried to prevent it from passing. You did not believe that Juneteenth should be a holiday. And so why are you surprised that when you show up to a Juneteenth event, people are booing you? You're against the existence of that very event and that very holiday. Yeah, I have a theory. Um, so the older uh, politicians just cannot understand that the internet exists. I know, it's amazing. And so they are assuming a mainstream media that is compliant, that lets them lie over and over again because their whole careers, that's what's happened. So they would vote against bills and then they would show up to celebrate as if they did the bills. And until very recently, the media never called them out on it. So he did the same trick, right? And thinking that it would work. Um, I got news for you, no one under 45 watches cable news. And so they all know and they all have access to the internet. They can Google things. So Ron Johnson is despicable on many fronts. And you're going to go into an African American community when you're one of the leading voices for blocking voting rights for African Americans and think that you're going to be received warmly. That is a preposterous expectation. Right, But on top of that, you specifically tried to block Juneteenth from becoming a holiday. And then you go and pretend you're celebrating it, ah, it's just unbelievable. And so he got his feelings hurt mm -hmm. because people realize what a terrible, unbelievable hypocrite and liar he is. And he's like, now this is very sad, isn't it? They're not nice They're to not. me. I mean, and you know, by the way, that reference to the people, people, mm -hmm. he's basically saying, like, look at these blacks. You, you know, I come in here and. <sighs> Look, no, he's a bad guy. It. He's a bad guy. But like, I, I don't, I don't want to like embellish. Like, we don't know that. That's here. Read that mean. quote again. He said, "You come down here and try to interact with people and be nice to people." See, you can't be nice to them. Okay, I try to be nice to these people, but you just can't be know. nice to them. Okay, I guarantee it. It doesn't matter. You don't need to believe that part. Okay. We, look, we all know. It doesn't he's matter. A he's, a he's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. <laughs> he tried to block Juneteenth <laughs> as a celebration of. Of independence of African Americans from slavery, and he's like, yeah. no, not buying it. And then he goes to celebrate. Yeah, and let me let me read you his statement in regard to why he did not want to pass legislation honoring Juneteenth as a holiday. Although I strongly support celebrating emancipation, I sure objected to the cost 
And lack of debate, hold on, what do you mean, <laughs> what is there to debate? What is there to debate? Well, it still seems strange that having taxpayers provide federal employees paid time off is now required to celebrate the end of slavery. It is clear that there is no appetite in Congress to further discuss the matter. Therefore, I do not intend to object. No, that was you objecting, by the way. <laughs> I mean, you objected earlier. Yes. And then that's you saying, I don't really want to end this. As I don't, don't really think that the end of slavery is worthy of a celebration. Yeah. I mean, you, that's you what read he the said, quote, by you the just way. saw the quote. That's what he said when he realized that there weren't, um, uh, he realized that the votes were there to override the legislative filibuster. So he realized he was losing anyway. And yes. so that's when he released that statement. But you know, he just wished that there was more time to debate. To debate what? Yeah, he said I, it's strange. You saw it in the quote. Strange that we are going to do a, a a day off for federal employees and everyone else to celebrate the end of slavery. Why is that strange? That's not strange at all. That's like the yeah. least strange thing I've ever heard in my life. So we do days off to celebrate the president, some of whom had slaves. We do day. We used to like everybody made a giant deal out of Columbus Day. Right, and when he was a vicious, vicious person, we can go on and on. We, I mean, these are not <laughs> days off, but Flag Day, Arbor Day, no objections by any of those things. But, but there's plenty of actual days off, federally mandated days off, for celebrating different things about America. Right? Mm -hmm. and Memorial and Day, Labor, Labor Day, Day, we can go on and on, right? But when it comes to ending slavery, he's like, that's awfully strange why anybody would want to celebrate that. I'm not technically against emancipation. Wow, <laughs> wow, I didn't know you were gonna roll that nice and kind, and yet still these people didn't seem to appreciate it. Okay, uh, I love it, you should boo him everywhere he goes. Okay, um, I know that you have something to talk about, like power or whatever. <laughs> I know, but can I just share something personal for one second? Uh, of course. <laughs> okay. Over the weekend, I I love I love my husband. Um, he loves baseball. Yes, and he does. over the weekend, uh, he asked me. He's like, "Hey, babe, we've been wanting to go to a Dodgers game, right? right. Now that like games are happening, um, but it's hard to come buy tickets, and they're very expensive." So. He's like, babe, do you want to go to a baseball game after you do um, the show for Jacobin on Saturday? And I was like, maybe. And he's like, it's a it's a minor league baseball game in Rancho Cucamonga. I was like, no, <laughs> no I don't. <laughs> so right now he's trying to get me to take my birthday weekend off because I work on Saturdays. And I was like, yeah, I could take it off, um, but is it for something fun or is it for? A baseball game in Rancho Cucamonga, because <laughs> like, I don't want to go into that. Because he does that sometimes. One time after we had wrapped up the show, he was like, "I'm gonna go get you something that you're gonna love. I'm gonna get you a treat." And I was like, "Ooh, a treat! What is it gonna be?" He ended up getting himself a treat <laughs> and pretending like he went to get it for me. Well, so, so, so in other words, he was a husband. Yes. <laughs> okay. Totally. Yeah, believe me, I've done the treats before. I okay. love it. It's so funny. Um, but I like it. And I got a special bonus for you. <laughs> We're going bowling in Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, both of those, the, the minor league game and the bowling in Bakersfield, could be a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. But not really a present you get for your wife. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah. Anyway, uh, God bless Christian. Okay. So, all right, now back to serious stuff. Sorry, now I'm the downer, okay? But no, seriously, I promised this conversation to you guys. I think it's actually fairly simple. Um, so it, it always feels like the bad guys are in charge, right? And so there's actually a good reason for that because, um, which sucks. <laughs> because um, the world is run on money and power. And so we wish it weren't. Uh, but but it is, right? Because money is the one tool that we all use to get things. In the old days, hey, that guy's got a way to start fire. We can trade something good for that and I'll trade you my lambskins for your thing, magic thing that starts the fire and the other guy's got a spear, etc. Oh There's lots God. of different tools. You okay. mean literal lambskins, okay. Yes, yeah, uh, okay, no, not the other one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Okay, so, um, but now, all of that is just money. So if you have money, you can get that tool, this tool, that tool. So obviously money becomes overwhelming. Well, who is going to pursue that tool? Well, first of all, everybody's gonna pursue it to some degree, right? But the folks who pursue it without any scruples 
are the ones who are more likely to get it because they value it more and they are willing to do things that others are not willing to do to get more of it, right? And so, and this same is true of power. And so, even if it starts out with five good guys and five bad guys going for money or going for power, what winds up happening is through the competition, the people who say, hey, you know what, money's important to me, but it's not the most important thing. I care more about my family, I care more about the community, I care more about the world, etc. They wind up de emphasizing money and power. Whereas the ones that are getting it for their own purposes, for their own ego, etc., emphasize it even more, which gives them a huge advantage. So they wind up having more and more money and more and more power. And then once you have that power, especially if you're of the mindset that it's for me and it's not for everyone else, well, you're very loath to share it. And so that's also part of humanity, okay? So that's why the cream doesn't rise to the top. The bad guys who are willing to do all that stuff and then jealously hold on to their power and jealously hold on to their money are the ones who wind up having the most money and the most power. Now, there are definitely exceptions, and these are all nothing is black and white, nothing is zero and 100%. It's all percentages, right? But unfortunately, over the course of time, even if it started out relatively even, and it wouldn't, because again, if you don't emphasize money as much as you do family, community, etc. You're a little less likely to have it. But even if it started even in the beginning, by the end, the good folks that care less about money and power and care less about their ego and their own personal fulfillment in that sense, right? They're gonna start to get weeded out. Mm -hmm. and, and the bad guys are gonna rise to the top. And so once that happens, they're gonna build a system to do what? to permanently maintain their power and their money for as long as possible. So that is why it feels like, wait, are we ever gonna get a good guy? Like, And the reason I brought it up is because of Lula da Silva. Mm -hmm. So there are exceptions, there are, right? Bernie Sanders, Lula da Silva, etc., right? But that's why they're exceptions. That's why when you see a Lula da Silva, you're like, oh my God, it's actually a good guy. Mm -hmm. And he rose to the top, and then of course they buried him. But now he's rising again. Right? Yeah. And so, guys, the task of pursuing justice is incredibly difficult. And it's incredibly difficult because of this. And there are other obstacles as well. It doesn't mean we shouldn't try, we definitely should try, because then if you don't try, that just leaves the system as is, and then we're all screwed. Okay? Now, I'm gonna say one last thing. The way to change that is to change the rules. If you don't change the rules, you're building sandcastles. So whether you, even if you get a, a COVID relief bill, hey, it was larger than expected. We got some checks to folks that were that we were happy about, right? That's great in the short term, but in the long term, did it change anything? Did it change the rules so that they're going to get daycare for their kids in the long run? No. Are they going to get right-sized unemployment checks in the long run? No. Are they gonna get health, free health care in the long run? No, it changed honestly nothing, right? And if, but if you change the rules, then you change the dynamic. And how, what would you change the rules to? You would incentivize caring about things other than just you. And that is actually possible. But you have to do that, otherwise the bad guys are always gonna rule, okay? I told you it was a downer, <laughs> I think I delivered on it. Uh, but I wanted you to know, Logically, what is the phenomenon behind what you're seeing? It, and trust me, it is very difficult, but we all, if we band together, it has happened every time. Eventually, the good guys win, but it is a Herculean effort. And then you've gotta cement it in the rules as much as humanly possible. So it takes longer for the bad guys to come back on top, <laughs> okay? And that's what FDR did, and that's why that lasted 40 years. 40 years on the domestic level mm -hmm. of doing the right things. And it made a giant difference in hundreds of millions of people's lives. We can do it again, but it's a battle, as you guys know every day. Okay, all right, uh, now, uh, NFL players come out as gay. I imagine uh, uh, Rick's gonna talk about that tonight. It's, he's coming on right now, excellent show for you guys, uh, Rick Strom. Big Rick Energy on twitch.tv slash TYT. And then later tonight at seven o'clock, live free and available to everyone. And you guys, you get both episodes since you're members. 
uh, Old School with me, Mark Thompson, David Schuster. Interesting combo for you guys tonight. We'll see you at both of those shows and then tomorrow. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.